Frame Raider. Nintendo. In Animal Crossing, you catch fish. There are 40 of them. But that's all I'm gonna say for this introduction because I'm fairly certain you didn't come here for me to tell you about the whole game and the fact that there are fish in it, and that it's fun to catch them. However, for most, the incentive to catch is to sell. Fish are great to sell to Nook for some extra bells. As stated in the title, this is a video guide for catching fish and otherwise aquatic creatures in Animal Crossing. So let's dive on in. We'll be going through the fish as tiers regarding their return profit, but within these tiers I will list them as least to most rare. The lowest of the low are jellyfish, the only creatures found in a tier I've called the trash tier. These can only be found in August in the ocean which resides at the very bottom of the player's generated world. It's one of two aquatic creatures that only appear during a single month of the year. They can be caught at any time during the day, so long as you stay within said month. However, I've found it far more common to catch them in the morning hours. Of the six shadow sizes, the jellyfish appears as a scale 2 shadow. It is only worth 100 bells, being the lowest possible return for the sale of an aquatic creature, sharing no mutuals in value. This might seem odd since the creature has only found one of 12 real world months, but think about it, who wants to be responsible for distributing a creature that can sting you with paralyzing venom? Introducing the Unwanted Tier For all the following tiers I will announce them with a price value, as all creatures in their respective tiers are worth the same price. And yes, I completely made up this tier scale. Unwanted Tier creatures are worth 120 bells. Crucian Carps are first with a year-round availability at any time of day. The river where the Crucian Carps reside is likely to be the most noticeable fishing location for the player since it divides the entirety of the generated map, thus making it the most common fish in the game. The Crucian Carp has a shadow scale size of 2. The sea bass would be considered far more common than the Crucian Carp if it weren't for them being exclusive to the ocean. These can be found year-round at any time of day. They're known for being a constant annoyance when fishing for other creatures in the ocean with the same shadow scale, being 4. The bluegill is less common, though still very easy to come by. They're available year-round between the hours of 9am to 4pm in the river. The bluegill has a shadow scale size of 2. Next up is a solo tier, like the jellyfish, but this one's worth 50% more. I call it the Odd One Out Prequel Tier, which the name of will make more sense later. This tier consists of one creature, the brook trout, which is worth 150 bells. It is available year-round at any time of day. They can only be found in the lake, and since this is a single acre, you likely won't come across them too often. However, in their place of origin, quite common indeed. Keep in mind most if not all fish found in the river can also be found in the lake, though some, like the brook trout, can only be found in the lake. This fish has a shadow size of 3. The low tier is next with a value of 200 bells. The small bass is available year-round at any time of day. They, like their medium and large counterparts, are only found in the river. They have a shadow size of 2. During certain availability months for other fish, these among other size 2 fish can be irritating to come across due to their likeness to other, much rarer fish. The Barbel Steed is available year-round at any time of day. They're only found in the river, boasting a shadow size of 3. As is a bit of a trend with low-tier fish, the Barbel Steed will prove to be an annoyance when searching for better fish during the availability cycles of more elusive fish. The Dace is available year-round between the hours of 4pm to 9am in the river with a shadow size of 3. During its hours of activity, it may prove to be the most frequent catch. The Pale Chub is available year-round between the hours of 9am to 4pm in the river with a shadow size of 2. Not as common as the previous fish in this tier. Its unique design and colorful appearance make this a nice fish to keep on display at home. Catfish are available between the months of May and September between 4pm to 9am in the river. It has a shadow size of 4, which it shares in common with multiple rare fishes in its territory. It has the lowest return profit of all size 4 fish, making it somewhat of a bummer to catch, but its lesser availability makes it nowhere near as redundant as the other fish with likeness to more elusive creatures. Next we have the first plus tier, being tiers that I've named as a bit of a bonus to their previous tier, as there aren't enough to really categorize them separately. It should be seen as an in-between of two different tiers. The low tier plus creatures have a value of 250 bells. First is the frog, which is the only aquatic species in the game that makes noise when nearby. It's also the first of the list that isn't truly a fish. I mean, I suppose a crawfish is negotiable, as well as a jellyfish, but they still have fish in the name. Frogs are amphibians, but in making this video I looked into frogs a bit. I knew they start as tadpoles, but I was curious as to what actually classified them as amphibians when, frankly, during their earliest moments they look far more familiar to fish in their facial structure. Nothing in the amphibian category looks like this, at any stage of development, as far as I'm concerned. So why do we call them amphibians? Are they not just land fish? I'm sure someone will offer an advanced explanation in the comments, but nonetheless I tell you this because I suppose scientifically you cannot call this category fish when there's a frog involved. 
Anyways, they're available between May and August at any time of day. Exclusively found in ponds, which are smaller pools of water found next to pre-allocated buildings like the museum and police station. The frog has a shadow size of 1, making it the cheapest among size 1 aquatic creatures. Second and lastly is the crawfish, available between April and September at any time of day. They are, like frogs, exclusive to ponds. They are the only size 2 creatures to be found in a pond, making it easily identifiable at surface level. The acceptable tier creatures have a value of 300 bells. The most common in this diverse tier would be the carp. This fish is available year-round at any time of day in the river. They have a shadow size of 4. Whenever I go fishing, each time I see a size 4 fish, I instantly associate it with the carp. While there are other common size 4 fish, this is probably the most common among them, at least in their territory. The loach is available between March and April at any time of day in the river. It has a shadow size of 1. During its availability, it is one of the most common of any fish type. The pond smelt is available between December and February at any time of day in the river. It has a shadow size of 2. While they're available, you can find them all over, much like the loach. The bass is available year-round at any time of day in the river. It has a shadow size of 3. The freshwater goby is available year-round between 4pm to 9am. It has a shadow size of 2. Killer fish are available from April to August at any time of day in either a pond or river. It's one of only two fish that can be found in more than one exclusive location. It has a shadow size of 1. Whether it be the pond or the river, these can be difficult to stumble upon. I strongly recommend looking in the ponds rather than rivers, however, since the amount of creatures that can spawn in ponds is significantly lower than that of a river. The acceptable tier plus creatures have a value of 650 bells. Immediately after the first, we have the second of two fish that can be found in more than one exclusive location. These would be salmon. They're available for a single month only, in September, in both the river and ocean. They have a shadow size of 4, which in terms of ocean fishing might be seen as frustrating due to the many other 4 size fish. However, during the season of activity, salmon are very common to come across, so you likely shouldn't have any issues catching one. The rainbow trout is available between March and June, absent for July and August, but returns from September to November. They can be found between the hours of 4am to 4pm in the river. They have a shadow size of 4. The medium tier creatures are the first to have over 1000 return, being 1300 bells. Sweet fish are available from July to September at any time of day in the river. They have a shadow size of 2. Surprising how they are worth even this much considering how absurdly common they are during season. The cherry salmon's availability is exactly as the rainbow trout, between March and June, absent for July and August, but returns from September to November. They can be found between the hours of 4am to 9pm in the river. Unlike the rainbow trout, they have a shadow size of 2, so you'll at least know what it isn't. The guppy is available between April and November from 9am to 4pm in the river. I've found them very hard to find later into the year, but in earlier months like April they are not common but easier to come by. They have a shadow size of 1. The bitterling is available between December and February at any time of day in the river, with a shadow size of 1. Goldfish are available year round at any time of day. They're found in the river and have a shadow size of 1. Consider yourself lucky if you catch one, as they are the first of many rare fish in the game. That also makes this the least expensive of the rare fish. There is a very similar fish to the goldfish that's worth no more than it, but slightly less common. This would be the pop-eyed goldfish, that are available year-round between 9am to 4pm. They're found in the river and have a shadow size of 1. Goldfish and pop-eyed goldfish have a unique aquarium when placed in the house, making them a more appealing choice in house decor. The medium tier plus creatures have a value of 2000 bells. The eel is available between June and September from 4pm to 9am at the river with a shadow size of 3. While very skinny outside of the water, inside it appears as a regular fish, as do other aquatic creatures in the game that don't identify as part of the direct fish family like frogs and crawfish. The koi is available year-round from 4pm to 9am at the river with a shadow size of 4. I found these fish tend to have more active periods followed by less active periods. So for example, one hour I might find two or even three of them, then the next hour it's as if they've entirely vanished. Fun fact, the koi is just a retextured carp, literally the exact same outline. The good tier creatures have a value of 3000 bells. The red snapper is available year round at any time of day in the ocean. They have a shadow size of 4. It's the second most common fish to find by the river, next to the sea bass, however considerably less common than said fish. The three exclusive types of fish you'll find there are all size 4 fish, so ultimately fishing at the ocean can at times feel like a waste of time with how many near worthless sea bass you'll come across. Still, the payoff is worth it if you're collecting enough red snappers, so feel free to toss away any sea bass you catch in hopes to better fill your inventory with those snappers. The large bass is available year-round at any time of day in the river. They have a shadow size of 4. It is, of course, the largest of the direct bass family. Other than carp, the large bass will prove to be the most common size 4 fish among them. 
Giant catfish are available two months short of the standard catfish. You can find these giant variations between June and September from 4pm to 9am in the lake. It has a shadow size of 5. Interestingly, three of the four months it's available here are also when the giant snakehead is available. What's so interesting about that is that their times are directly opposite of one another, with the snakehead being more of a morning fish, the catfish being more of a night fish. Angelfish are available between May and October from 4pm to 9am in the river. They have a shadow size of 2. The majority of fish from the river have a shadow size of 2, which makes finding rarities like the angelfish a chore of going back and forth through the river, just hoping to get lucky while your charisma goes down for each crucian carp or small bass you catch. I found it to be equally as rare as another fish we'll encounter shortly, which is worth far more bells than the angelfish. Next up is the last of the solo tiers, the Odd One Out Sequel tier. Told you it'd make sense later. It consists of one creature with a value of 5,000 bells. Here we have the Baird Knife Jaw, which are available between March and November at any time of day. It can only be found in the ocean and has a shadow size of 4. These pop up and down in rarity from time to time. Some days you might find 5 Baird Knife Jaws, the next day you might find none. The next week you might find none. You might be wondering what the schematics of this truly are and if the game has a genuine semblance of randomness to its spawn rate, or if it all happens to be coincidence. Well, I don't have the answer to that. What I can tell you is that when a fish spawns in, it will always be that fish regardless of whether you rewound or not. This can be proven with save states. Beyond that, I don't have the tools or know-how to confirm or deny this. I can only speak from my personal experience. Still, given said experience, I would be surprised if there wasn't some format the game follows within the predetermined formula. The great tier creatures have a value of 6,500 bells. The giant snakehead is available between June and August from 9am to 4pm in the lake, with a shadow size of 5. It's the last of the giant creatures you'll find in the lake, which is unfortunate considering the only two giant creatures at the lake are exclusive to the summer months. The piranha is available between June and September from 9am to 4pm in the river. It has a shadow size of 2. It is closely related, not physically, but in-game to the angelfish. They're both very rare, both from the river, and have completely opposite time slots as if to separate them as two equivalent options, if that makes sense. The piranha is slightly less common with less availability by two months. However, when specifically looking for it during its availability, it proves to be roughly the same in rarity. The high tier creatures have a value of 10,000 bells. The Arapaima is available between July and September from 4pm to 9am in the river with a shadow size of 6, making it the largest fish in the entire game which is unrivaled by any other. Many consider this to be a rare fish, and it is, but I haven't found it to be quite as rare as people suggest. I come across these far more than any other fish that I genuinely consider to be rare. I mean, just check out this footage right here. I found two just by crossing one acre to another. Perhaps their ability to show up is more reliant on the weather conditions. You know what they say, when it rains, the fish come out to play. Very true in this game. The Arowana is available between July and September from 4pm to 9am in the river, identically to the Arapaima. Very much unlike the Arapaima, the Arowana has a shadow size of 3. These fish are quite hard to come by. While there's less size 3 competition than size 2 in the river, even during its availability it is by no means a common sight. The large char is available between March and June, absent for July and August but returns from September to November. They can be found between the hours of 4am to 9pm. Very much like the rainbow trout and cherry salmon. Like the rainbow trout, it has a shadow size of 4. Unlike the both of them, the large char can only be found at the waterfall, whether above or below it. This is the only fish in the game which has an exclusivity to the waterfall. Like with the lake, you can find any river creatures here as well. The extreme tier creatures have a value of 15,000 bells. The sea lacanth is available year-round at any time of day, however there must be weather conditions that impact the water for them to show up, being either rain or snow. This will bring the quote-unquote living fossil to a water level high enough that the player can catch. They have a shadow size of 5 and can only be found in the ocean. Also, on very rare occasions, the island. The very first sea lacanth I ever caught some 15 years ago was strangely enough on the island. I have never come across one there since. Here's my attempt at catching one on footage. Come on, come on. Yes, I got one! Oh no, my pockets are full, I... Oh. Players often refer to this as the rarest fish in the game, however, I can't agree. Some days, yes, with the weather conditions, I can find none. Other days, I'll find dozens. So many that I don't even know what to do with them. Generally that takes place very late, like 2 or 3 AM, but I can still quite easily find them during the day in the correct weather conditions. When you do come across a time where you can collect a whole bunch, try to fill your inventory and sell them for an absurd return of 225,000 bells. The stringfish is available between December and February from 4 AM to 9 PM in the river. It has a shadow size of 5. These I've found to be the rarest fish in the game. There are no specific conditions to find them, unlike the coelacanth, and are available only three months of the year. 
Even discounting that fact, locating one's shadow may feel like an impossibility. I can count the number of stringfish I've found on a single hand. To be honest, I think I've only found two in my entire life. And those are all 40 aquatic creatures you can find in Animal Crossing. I hope you've learned something today on how to go about catching those specific tricky ones that you just can't get your hands on. Or maybe you just enjoyed the commentary. If you did, then I've got good news for you. Here are some additional fishing tips that I think will be helpful for players. Here are all the fish you can catch in the river. Here's the lake. This, as far as I know, includes all the river creatures as well. Here's the ocean. And here's the pond. Here are all the shadow one size fish. Shadow two size fish. Shadow three size fish. Shadow four size fish. Shadow five size fish. And our exclusive shadow six size fish. Here are the fish available in January, keeping in mind that all shown on the far right are available at any time of the year, not considering their hourly availability. February changes nothing, but followed by March as the first removal, completely swapping out for a new set. More are added in April. Same for May. In June we get five more, but one is removed. In July, even more, but three removed. In August, we get to see the jellyfish for its one available month. September gets the salmon for its one month, while three others are introduced and four from the last month are removed. October has nothing new, but removes the most of all single months with eight removed fish. November removes two and adds none. December is a completely fresh start, removing all five previous fish and inserting three new, effectively running for three consecutive months until it is changed once again in March. That's right, three entire months in the game of the exact same lineup, so be sure to get all your fishing in during the year's most prominent months. And now for some generalized tips. You probably already know this, but never run when in the area of fish. It scares them off. You can run a good couple meters away from the water, but even then you should use caution. One miscalculated step can send the fish back where they came from. The island is not great for fishing. It's basically the same as your local ocean. Fish will only spawn as you move acres, and here there are only two acres. Bugs can be more frequent, but that's not the focus here. When it's raining out, there is an extremely high chance of each acre with water having a fish in it. It's true what they say, when it rains, the fish come out to play. As far as I know, the river proceeding the waterfall is no different from the river preceding the waterfall, so you don't really need to keep going up and down the hill. Fish that fall down the waterfall despawn, so they essentially die. Fishing tournaments are held every Sunday in November and June. As you probably know, they only take fish in the bass family. You can save your large bass ahead of time and present it on that day. Chip won't know the difference. However, you get a prize for each time you beat the previous record, so perhaps start with a medium bass and work up from there. The fish AI is not the best. Quite bad, in fact. But that doesn't matter because it's always fun. Basically, the bobber needs to be placed or end up quite linearly to the fish's direct line of sight, despite most of these fish have eyes on both sides of their bodies, meaning the direct line of sight is pretty much a blind spot. The game doesn't expect you to think that far, and you shouldn't. It's just a game. Fish become more quote-unquote intelligent when you have the golden rod, which is gained after catching every aquatic creature in the game. This also adds a fish weather vane to your house. Fish will nibble the bobber a maximum of four times. If it gets to a fifth, you know that's the bite. Moving from one acre to another doesn't change what happened in the first acre, but crossing a second acre then going back to the first will reset it. Spending a certain amount of time or interaction within the acre next to you can also reset what is in this case the first acre. Why bother with this? Well, to spawn new fish, of course. This tactic will be very useful if you're looking for a fish specific to a certain acre, like the lake. Avid fishers will know the horrors of junk you'll be tossed on occasion when trying to fish. This is actually randomly generated when you start reeling in. Unlikely, but still a concern. This can be proven by using save states where if you load a save from before getting junk, you'll most likely catch the fish. The creature below the shadow is also, by the way, predetermined once it shows up in an acre. Using save states will have you catch the same fish each time, thus fish themselves are not randomly chosen based on size as you hook them. They will always be that specific fish regardless. So that's it. I hope you've enjoyed this documentation on GameCube's Animal Crossing Aquatic Creatures. Hopefully you've learned something new about the game here today. I encourage you who've never played the game to give it a go. It's entertaining. And when it comes to fishing, it can be pretty exciting. Thank you for watching.